Live from the Catskill Mountains, it's Andy Animal's Stable of Stars! Tonight's guest, punk rock legend, Andy Chernoff, and celebrity chef, Rick Orlando! Ladies, it's not supposed to see me saying it's not, not supposed to be the guy doing the announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, Andy Animal! Yeah. I'd like to thank our announcer. Welcome to Andy Animal's Stable of Stars, everybody! We have a very, very special night of fun and magic ahead of us. Yeah, let it play. <laughs> let it play. <laughs> um, let me tell you about, uh, it, it's uh, 17 years since we lost our dear Joey Ramone, so tonight's going to be dedicated to sweet, sweet Joey Ramone. I'm going to try not to cry about the Rambo's time every year. I went out a little fear. You know, so what if I do? That's good television. Um, uh, I saw a white deer. I saw I, I had a party at our producer Chase's house. We had a party the other night. And I stumbled out of his place the next morning. Jumped in my car. Drove down the road. And I saw a white deer. And I looked it up. Wikipedia would tell you that the white deers come from Seneca, New York, and they all live on some abandoned military base. And uh, we'll have more for you on that soon. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's been, what, two weeks since our last episode? Bloodshot Bill and everybody. I bought a T-shirt, and I'm leaving the sleeves on because I'm feeling a little... Maybe I'm growing up a little bit. I'm going to try the sleeves on the T-shirt thing. After we saw the band The Shine, which I thought were called The Shins, <laughs> which I thought I was going to see The Shins, turned out to be this really cool band from Rochester. They do this like a vintage British pub rock kind of thing. I saw one of them wearing, they're from Rochester. I saw one of them wearing a Genesee beer shirt. I'm like, that's cool. I'm going to get one of my own. So I got this one. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna wear I'm gonna try the sleeves for a while, and I kind of feel like Michael J. Fox in Back to the Future because it's this shade of maroon. <laughs> anyway, I don't know how how much interesting. Oh yeah, what interesting stuff. We're about to be announcing the big lineup for the uh, my big fun abrasion this year on July 27th and 28th. Uh, it's gonna be meltdown alumni playing this year it's gonna be byob the camping is gonna be free byob camping is free get what i'm saying uh we're hoping to release the really cool poster on wednesday and have tickets on sale on friday anyway i'm really excited for tonight's guests um we're gonna we're gonna uh cut to a word from our sponsors and then we're gonna have some magic happen so uh here's a word from our sponsors let's turn it up we've got them all for you the pleasure and the For you. Plato's Retreat, located in the Ansonia Hotel, is a unique club open to free-thinking adult couples. We offer a relaxing, no-pressure environment, complete with heated swimming pool and that great disco beat. Plato's may not be for everyone, but you won't know until you try it. For more information, call... The pleasure and the fun will keep you feeling young. It's for you. Retreat is for you. Oh, 
Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> and we're going to show it in front of me when we when I do say it. Um, yeah. Uh, thanks, Plato's Retreat, for uh, buying us these cool microphone flags. Uh, <laughs> don't forget to call beep. Now, before we introduce our very special, legendary New York guy guest, uh, we're going to, uh, It's as I said, it's been 17 years since we lost Joey Ramone. We're going to show his video. We're going to show Andy Chernoff's video for a song he wrote called Sweet, Sweet Joey. Try not to cry. Let's see it, B.A. Bam, I am. Ladies and gentlemen, founder of the Dictators, New York City, punk rock legend, boy, boy, the guy who invented punk rock right here, Andy Chernoff. I didn't invent it. I'm, I'm the Christopher Columbus of punk rock. Okay. What about, did David Peel invent it? No. <laughs> it's good to, it's good to have you here, buddy. Hey, man. It's good to have you. Yeah. I'm impressed. Leaving the sleeves on the shirt, on the uh, t-shirt. I'm growing up. That's really... The other, my other sign of like growing up. I the side of Andy Animal. Yeah, well, our, our new band together, we had a band together called Sensuous Tiger, and it's kind of like a, it's kind of like, like a, I'd like to say it's like growing up music, but it's just an, another attempt, and it's never going to happen, probably, but it's going to be a <laughs> hilarious attempt. It's good to have you here, buddy. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, it's an auspicious day. Uh, Joe Ramon died on this day. April 15th in 2001, that's 17 years ago. It was tragic. Very tragic, yeah. I'm certainly a good buddy of mine, so it's been on my mind today. Yeah. And uh, I just played my tribute, so thank you for playing that. Yeah, I was happy to. It, it got me misty-eyed. And yeah, Joey used to uh, used to come to Woodstock all the time, and I was he did. a little 15-year-old fanboy, and he'd always go out of his way to, you know, say hi to me. And... 
and you know, I, ch I jumped up on stage and sang with him at the Tinker Street Cafe. I seen him perform at the right in back of us in the rec field here. Uh, he was everything to me, and uh, uh, that uh, I, I didn't even think put two and two together that the episode that you're going to be on happened to be the 17 year anniversary. Yeah, I know. It was just, I didn't even think about it until like, <laughs> like two hours ago. I mean, I knew it was the day he uh, yeah. died, but thinking, hey, well, here's a good way to just talk about him. You know, he was certainly a hero to a lot of people yeah. and a great guy and an amazing musician. He's rock and roll of fame, you know. I mean, it changed rock and roll. Uh, you know, maybe the Beatles changed more than Ramones, but the Ramones certainly were. Not to me. <laughs> Not to <laughs> okay, me. Okay, well, right, right. <laughs> to a different, another generation, it was the Ramones. All Ramones, what all they the did. time. What they did, they just turned rock roll upside down. We're gonna, we'll get right back to the subject of Joey, but uh, um, Christopher Columbus of punk rock set sail from New Paltz, New York, right? I to, yes, I went to school in New Paltz. You went to school in New Paltz. Yeah, I went to summer camp in Shandaken also when I was a kid. In where Shandaken? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I think so I've know this. I've never been up to this era. Say what? Say no, no. Camp Timberlake. All the New York City legends went to summer camp upstate. <laughs> I read all the Kiss books. They all like uh, had summer jobs at like Kutcher's Resort and and all places like that. Yeah, Buddy Hackett was punk rock when he worked at the at the Concord or wherever. <laughs> Who's the uh, take my wife, please? Uh, Henny. Henny Youngman. Yeah, he lived up in uh, Shady. Our, uh, our announcer, Drew, lived in his old house. Um, but yeah, he started the Dictators in New Paltz, New York, took it to New York City. Then is, did you know the Ramones before or after that? Well, I didn't know them, but uh, we used to play at this club called the Coventry. Uh, we used to see this guy ahead above everybody else wearing, he had long hair and wore platform shoes and satin pants, and he was already 6'5", and Joe, this is Joe Ramon, dressed in all in glam. Yeah. And he looked like, the, he looked kind of nerdy, and people, he could look like the guy people beat up in high school, and he did kind of get beat up in high school. But uh, he was in the audience. He was and, Jeff Starship back Jeff Starship. then, right? He had a band yeah. called Sniper. And uh, so I didn't, I wasn't, I can't say, I wouldn't say he was my friend, but we seen each other in the bathroom and how you doing, you know, didn't really exchange anything, but I didn't know who he was. Yeah. And then actually one day I'm walking down the street and I see a, pic, a poster for the Ramones at CBGB's. This is probably 75, uh, early 75. And I see there's, there's that guy in the audience. And wow, he's wearing a leather jacket. And uh, I said, he's in a band now? He's in an, he's, I didn't know, I never saw him in Sniper. Let me add that. I don't think anybody did. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> I said, this guy's in a band? I gotta check this band out. And I went down to CBGB's with my buddy Scott, and Blondie was opening up, and they were really horrible. And there were like five people in the audience, and then the Ramones get on, and they do 15 songs in 15 minutes. And this is, you know, the days when people were doing 20 minute drum solos. Yeah. So it was like, uh, it was over. When did they go? What, what happened? It was like, I didn't, I didn't quite register. Um, but I liked it. Did I think it was going to be what it became? No. But I certainly liked it on first thing, and it was, you know. What stood out about it to you? It was just, well, it was like they stripped away all the fat from the bone and the meat, you know, and you just had the, the meat. And uh, Did you have a catchy, short? very catchy song. Very, the first album, is, every song has a hook driven into your brain. It's very yeah. short attention span for yes, us, I guess. Yes. Well, you had, you know, we had Joey and Dee who were, had mental problems. You know, they, it's, it's well documented. And uh, they got their influence, like the Beach Boys, and they spit it out, you know, Dee Beach Boys, Rockaway Beach, you know? Yeah. They came out in their style. Um, you know, Ronettes, it comes out, I don't know, Sheen is a punk rocker. I don't know who, but I'm just saying, you know, they, they knew their music, they knew their roots, they knew the history, and they just 
went through their brains and came out. What, uh, what can you tell us? Whacked out brains of Joey and Didi. What can you tell us about Joey that not many people know? A story or something. Um, oh. Should I have brought this up before the show? Yeah, I, I can't think of off the top of my head. I mean, you know, um, he was a genuinely he, nice, genuinely guy. sweethearted guy. Very smart, very quiet. But as time, as the band got more popular, he was able to assert himself more because he was he was not athletic. He had health, a lot of health problems, and uh, so he was in his own little world. He spent some time in a mental institution. Uh, it's in his brother's book. Uh, I didn't and, know that. Yeah, he had some mental issues, but uh, genuinely a uh, sweet guy, smart guy who had a vision, and they all had a vision, and, uh, you know, changed rock and roll. We got a couple of questions uh, from our Facebook and Instagram people. Uh, somebody wanted said that you have some sort of association with Blue Oyster Cult. Yeah, we had the same managers and producers back in the uh, back in the day. Okay. Yeah, Sandy Perlman and Murray Krugman. Okay. Sandy Perlman, he died last year. He was living in San Francisco. And uh, Murray, Murray used to live in Willow. Now he lives in in Vermont, and he's a lawyer. Willow's in Eps and Woodstock here. For those who don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and Sandy, Sandy produced the Second Clash record. Okay. And they also worked with. Uh, he worked somewhere with Aldo Nova. He managed him or something. Anyway, we we we, we had a manager producer relationship, and we were friends with Blue Sculpt. I still work with Albert Bouchard and a lot of stuff, and Joe Bouchard. Still good friends with them. So um, cool. Yeah, They're from Long Island, right? Actually, from upstate New York. Blue Oyster Cult was. Yeah. Where? But they, How far upstate? Um, uh, all the way by the by, by one of the lakes. For well, like further than here. Yeah, Albert and Joe were further up. And then uh, Eric is, I'm not sure where they're from, but they they went to school in Stony Brook or something. That's where they formed. And uh, uh, somebody was asking, wanted you to, we, we covered a little bit of it, but uh, tell us more about some of those Queens clubs, like the Coventry. Who did you see there? I gave like, you the story, the Coventry story. We you saw Kiss there. there, though, right? I saw Kiss there, yeah. Oh, wait, we're going to bring that up in a little bit. Um, okay, so you were with, <laughs> let's get it back to Joey, but I had to get those out of the way. Um, you were with Joey yeah. when he departed this dimension. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Had gotten, it was April 15th, 2001, to get a call from his brother, and he said, hey, uh, who actually lives, has a house in, in uh, Ashokan, by the way, <laughs> yeah. uh, says, hey, it looks like this might be the last day. You should come down to the hospital as soon as you can which I did, and um, walk into the hospital room, and his mother was there, his mother's boyfriend, Arturo Vega, uh, Mickey, his brother, and Arlene, Mickey's wife, and uh, he, was, he was out on the, uh, on the bed, and about sometime in the next half hour or so, uh, people talking, I, I noticed one of those oscilloscope machines for life signs, you know, and it went yeah. like that, I go, whoop. Oh. That's it. Uh, and I literally, literally, not to, you know, I saw him die. I saw the, the blood stop flowing in his face. Uh, Whatever pinkish quality it had became white. And his eyes were open. His Arturo closed his eyes. And, uh, and that was it. So, oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I uh, <clears throat> one of my old bands, I used to cover... Uh, a song of Mondo Bizarro. Cause I saw a video of of uh, him performing it at at CB's, or it was a CB's gallery. I, but it like unplugged, and I thought it was so beautiful. I didn't realize it was you playing with him. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't realize that Andy wrote this song with Joey. So we're gonna sing this one for Joey tonight for the Joey Ramone special. Okay. I just discovered today that Andy wrote this song with Joey's. And... Mm -hmm. 
got my sights, baby, set on you. The things you said, well, maybe they're true. It's not gonna happen. I won't let it happen. I won't let it happen. Not again. That's not how I want it to be. It's not gonna happen. I won't let it happen. I won't let it happen. Not again. Sponsors, and then we've got celebrity chef Rick Orlando coming. Up. Whoa! <laughs> You'll have a great time in New York City, east side of town, at the Hotel Seville. We do great cooking, honey. We'll treat you right. We know you'll love your bill. Remember in New York City, Hotel Seville. Your friendly home away from home. Our friendly home away from home. Madison Avenue at 29th Street. Call 532-4100. We bring shopping closer to you. Midway shopping mall. All right, they got to do Parking more stores too. Yeah. yeah. Midway shopping mall. Cozy in, bro. Here's where shopping starts. Put your mic up. With something for everyone. When you shop for anything large or small, shop easier at Midway Mall. Welcome back, everybody. Now, Woo! our next guest is somebody whose food I grew up on and I love and I love to eat. In case you didn't know that about me, I like. I, I like created food. a monster. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd say most famous for his pan black and string beans, which I'd say is Woodstock, New York's regional delicacy. You know, Buffalo's got the wings. Rochester's got the garbage plate. Binghamton's got the chicken speedies. We got the pan black and string beans. Now, you're not supposed to show them yet. You're supposed to let me keep talking. All right. Uh, <laughs> now, uh, uh, Rick Orlando, everybody. What up? <laughs> Who is also in a band with uh, Andy Chernoff here, called Rick Chef and the Associates. What up? What's up, buddy? Yeah, brother. (laughs) I grew up on Rick's food, and uh, they just closed after 25 years. 25 years. We were like the Ramones of restaurants, Uh right? They were. (laughs) And I was the Christopher Columbus of Plan Black and the String Beans. Yeah. (laughs) So I got a a killer Joey story. Let's hear it. So when we first opened on Xena Road, we had this little back patio. Oh, I remember. And uh, one night, and I, I had known Joey. I didn't know him really well, but we had done a few gigs on the same stage, and I, I've known him through the years. Someone says to me, one of my waiters, hey, Joey Ramone's out there. So I walk out, and 
my punk rock stage name was Ricky Rondo. And I, I didn't know whether he remembered me. He just looked at me and said, Rondo. And I said, Joey. And he goes, can you make me clam sauce? <laughs> and I don't know if you noticed, but for a long time on our menu, we yeah. had Joey's clam sauce. Yeah. I, and I made clam sauce as a kid, but it wasn't something that was on my menu. Yeah, I remember. Although it is one of the great three ingredient dishes on the planet. And we every time he came in, he was around late 90s, quite a lot. He was with Elder Stiletto uh, a lot. Yeah. He would just look to the kitchen and just like mouth clam sauce, and I'd put him <laughs> up clam sauce. So, you know, Joey was a clam sauce man. I think I'd seen him there once. That was, that was, that was really special being able to grow up here. And eat pan black and string beans and see Joey Ramone walking around. I tell you what. Yeah, right. <laughs> now, uh, New World uh, closed last week. The two, the two weeks before that, it was a madhouse. I was lucky. I got in there twice. Yeah, where were they all for the last five years, man? I couldn't make. <laughs> I couldn't make it the final night. Where was I on the final night? I had to go to. Uh, I had to go to New York City for some reason. What was I in New York City for? It was one of the few times. Clam to go sauce? To the city. Going for clam sauce. No, I don't eat sea, I don't eat seafood. No. I don't like seafood. But man, I'd like that. You made that Thai Italian love thing. Yeah. It was like a bolognese uh fettuccine type thing with like a coconut uh milk in it, right? Yeah, I made that on uh, a TV show years ago with this guy Tommy Tang. Modern Thai cooking with Tommy Tang, and he would try to crack you up. He keeps saying Rick, pass the peanut oil instead of peanut you know. <laughs> you're trying to do a TV show, right? But at the end of the show, he said, we jam. We make Thai, Italian love. And I said, all right. And we <laughs> took currants, throw ingredients in a dish, and that kind of stuck in my head. Yeah, it was, that's, that's a legendary little dish. Um, but uh, there's still a New World restaurant in Albany, uh, which I'm going to be, when I get that need for them pan black and string beans and that, they got the Thai Italian love out there. I haven't oh, been to yeah. that one. I might license the string beans out, you know. You got it, dude. I was on Daryl's house a few months ago. Oh, and really? Daryl said, I want to put these on my menu. And I said, how much money do you make every time Sarah smiles on the radio? And he said, 17 <laughs> cents. I'm like, you give me 17 cents every time you sell string beans. Well, I and decide, you can do it. <laughs> I decided they were our, our regional delight when Sunfrost started selling them. Uh, the farmer's market up the road. And, yeah, uh, pale imitation, I must say. Yeah, but still. Thank you, Matt. Love but you. still, you know, it's like it's like the buffalo wings. Yeah. It's like, ooh, it will make some bad. I mean, obviously, you make My son, Terry, gets so pissed. He'll go out and say, Dad, I saw somebody with one of your dishes on the menu. I wanted to go in and trash the kitchen. I'm like, this chill, Terry. It's cool. It's, yeah. it's called homage, man. Yeah. They're I'm, doing covers. It's covers. It's I, covers. I'm extra proud of you when I see yeah, that on somebody's good. menu. Uh, what 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 is in the pan black and string beans? String beans, <laughs> pan blackening spice mix. The spice mix is a can, and can voodoo you just, Zulu craft, voodoo craft, love. Craft mix, right? Yeah. <laughs> spice mix, my secret what mix. Pan, you it up and you a... What if we looked it up on the internet? What would we the find in the mix? There. It's there. All right, it's there. It's just like <laughs> whatever. You know what? It's like saying you can play my song. It might suck, but you can play it. <laughs> and then occasionally someone makes a really good rendition. www.google.com. <laughs> There's a bar there. You type in Chef Ricks with an R-I-C, apostrophe S, pan black and string beans. There's actually a video of it. So if you can't make it on the video, man, it's on www.youtube.com. Start over. Open the box of cereal if you can't do that. What's up with uh with your guys' band, Chef Rick and Associates? Now that uh, New World is closed, we're gonna start playing a little bit more. It was a little hectic month. Spike opened a record store. Spike, uh, Spike, Spike Priggin, Spike Priggin, who I played with in 1979 and 80 in New Haven. We grew up together. And hey, uh, he's got a he's got a new record store in Catskill. Spike's yeah. Record Rack. Spike's Record Rack. You know, there was a place in New Haven called Merle's Record Rack. It was the bad record store. There was the good record store was Cutler's. Okay. And uh, Merle, Merle's Record Rack was a place that had all the disco cutouts and stuff, but it was funky. It had like the sequin sign that blew in the wind and stuff, you know. Yeah. So he kind of derived from that title. Great title. Then you were young punk rockers from New Haven. Was New there, Haven. Was, was there much of a, a punk rock community out there? This is like back in you guys 70s. The 70s. There was actually a pretty good scene there. It was, the, and you know, we we were a 45, 50 minute train ride into New York, so. 
We had a couple of clubs. I booked the first club. I booked booked the first Band punk club. New York and play New Haven all the time. Ron's place, man. I put I booked Ron's place, which was about the size of this room, and we booked like for instance, we had Crayola play there. We had Suicide play there. Um, you play there? No, because they they played the bigger place, the Oxford Ale House, which I was in charge of. I was the new wave booking agent. I was like <laughs> eighteen, and the owner came to Ron's place, and we were packed. Right? And he goes. How do I get in touch with these bands? His name was Bob Lucibello, and I said, I'll handle it. So he gave me Monday nights, and we would, I basically had communication with a couple clubs in Boston and New York, and a lot of bands that were touring through would come and hit New Haven on a Monday night. Which was fun. What was the other club? We played another club there. The uh, Arcadia Ballroom. No, no, no. Toads. Toads. Yeah, Toads was fun. I've I actually heard saw of that. Ramon's second tour, the Leave Home Tour. Toad, Toads, Toads Place. place. I've heard of that before. Yeah. But it was cool. I remember we, Ron's, the scene was kind of weird. We had like, when REM first came out, I got this 45 of Radio Free Europe in an envelope saying we're going to be in that area. So I booked him on a Tuesday night at Ron's place. And the way Connecticut works, if you charge a dollar or more cover charge, there was a cabaret tax. So everything was 99 cents. We just get rolls of pennies and give you back your penny. We booked REM on a Tuesday night and six people paid. So they made five ninety four that night. <laughs> Just want you to know that all turned out fine. Old for days, them. yeah. And you used to you told me you used to uh, blast the dead boys and the Stooges and shoot Roman candles at hippies in the park with your oh, punk yeah. rock friends. All those good things, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I heard. Yeah, we, there was uh, a park where there was like. That we used to call them the earth shoe people used to hang out yeah. <laughs> basically the deadheads yeah. and we used to like to drive by really slow playing the dead boys or iggy just and they would get really mad turn that down i'm like it's rock and roll guys. i'm just like you i used to be like that but then i kind of like turned into a combination of the we all do know, eventually like moved to woodstock trolling basically yeah <laughs> <laughs> we all do that eventually um, and they had good weed so um, let's, uh, this, this, what, what, what we're, we're planning on doing together is, uh, you wore this shirt because it came out in 1975. Ramones, uh, cold gin. This is the car. Look, this is, uh, all right. It's a Carlton Fisk shirt. And of course, Carlton Fisk with the 1975. We don't know anything about the Red Sox. You got it. That's in, in Connecticut. It's like cold, like the Red Sox. I lived on the border. Okay. I'm a hybrid. All right, Rick was talking about the Red Sox and the power went out. Is the internet back? So we got to do this from my phone for a minute. Okay. Oh, we're back. And then, yeah. Dude, that shirt. You're probably you're Mets or Yankees. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I'm a Mets guy. Are we back? We're back on the same feed? Well, no, we're back. We're back. We're back on my phone. Should I stop on this phone? Yeah. Okay. We'll be right back, everybody. Dude, that shirt. That's a shit, man. Come on. <laughs> Get out. Got the emblem. I actually. You're Mets and Yankees. Mets. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm a too. Mets fan too. Queens. Yeah, I like the Mets, Mets too. Fan. Yeah, Mets and Red Sox. 67, 68, 69. Are we back? We're back on the same feed? Well, no, we're back. We're back. We're back on my phone. Should I stop on this phone? Yeah. Okay. We'll be right back, everybody. We're not back on that same video, though, are we? I we get that monitor turned on in front of me? Let's pull out the uh, guitars. Yeah, there's a power button. Uh, you have absolute power. Country media. I just ended this book. Okay, uh, Chef Rick Orlando started talking about the Red Sox and the powers went out. The power went out. Uh, Coincidence? Coincidence? Chernoff and I, I don't know. are Mets guys. So let's just not talk about that anymore. All right, change subject. New subject. Next please. subject is the Coventry in Queens. Andy, tell us about the first time you saw Kiss. Um, 
Scott, who dictated, who went to college, Lehman College in the Bronx with the ace, Paul Fraley. And uh, actually, we were coming back. We saw the Who in Philadelphia, and we stopped at a, red stop, at a rest stop. Are you almost said it again. Watch out <laughs> for the lights. <laughs> rest. And we're, we're getting our burgers, and Kiss comes with, you know, Paul Fraley and, and Gene Simmons, and they come, they come in. They went to the Who in Philadelphia also on the way back to New York. We stopped at the same rest stop. And, and uh, he says, I'm in a band called Kiss. And they played the Coventry. So I went to see them, and they had their, their weird, you know, their, like, first outfits on. <laughs> and uh, he breathed fire. They had some really cheesy gimmicks. But I liked the music, you know. I thought get, it was all kind of cheesy. I thought it was stupid, the whole out makeup and everything. And, uh, but I, thought it was, was, I liked the music. They said their mission was to become bigger than the New York Dolls. They did that. Well, the they New York Dolls that. were kings of New York at the time. Yeah. They were the kings. Yeah, they ran the show. Everybody wanted to be like Yeah, the everybody dolls, wanted right? to look like them. Um, let's play a Kiss song. You guys want to play a Kiss song? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Joey liked, I know Joey Ramone liked Kiss. Yeah, of course I want to play a Kiss song. I'll play this one for Joey. We're all plugged in. Our stacks of Marshalls behind us. How yeah. do you do this? Ready to rock? I'll put my mic down a little bit for the guitar, all right? All right? Wait to hear that sustain on the lead. One, two, three, four.
pick. Broke the pick. Can we zoom in on the broke the pick? Yeah, Locking on the acoustic guitar. Broke the fucking. The language we're on a public access. Pounding the acoustic guitar, folks. Pound it up. Uh, <laughs> can I keep this this broken kiss pick? It. Cool. Wow. All right. Um, we're going to cut to a commercial, and Chef Rick Orlando is going to cook us up as something in this. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wait for more sponsors. It's hard to tell special prices in most grocery <laughs> stores. So Grand Union oh, puts a red dot all right. on all their weekly specials. Red Dot Specials, like Bumblebee Solid White Tuna in oil or water, now on sale for only 89 cents. Delicious seal test ice cream, especially priced at just $1.79 with coupon. You don't have to be a kid to love Captain Crunch cereal. The 16-ounce box is $1.89. And watch for our color circular. So dash from dot to dot for Red Dot Specials at Grand Union. Okay. Where's your ice cream at, bro? It's in the freezer. Scott, you want to go in the freezer in the kitchen there? Grab our ice cream. It's in the steward's bag. If you're in love with golf, tennis, water sports, romantic dining and dancing at your own private like villa, version. you'll love Penn Hills in the nearby Poconos. If you're in love, you'll love Penn Hills. Call toll-free 800-233-8130 for reservations at Penn Hills. For lovers only. For lovers only. Hey, and we're back. So the legendary chef Rick Orlando is going to make us some uh, bananas uh, flambe. I do bananas flambe. You want me to make bananas flambe? I think so. Who doesn't want bananas flambe? Okay, are you in charge of scooping the ice cream? Yeah. I'll oh. scoop it. Scoop, man. He's a scooper. They call him Scoops. Right. So a scoops. This is like the most popular dessert in the restaurant ever. And now that I'm showing you how to make it, it's like the string beans. You're going to do your cover of it. Yeah. But it's really healthy. You start with a ton of butter. Okay. Put it in the pan right there. A lot of butter. Because we're making caramel. Okay. And swirl it around. Use a knife. That's a lot of butter. That's not a lot of butter. It's going to be a lot of caramel. Watch. Oh, wait, we can eat these. Uh, here, you hold that. And you hold so, look, we're swirling the butter. This is. Um, oh, I don't want to see it. And then we're going to take our banana. Can you see the, can you guys, you guys can you see the butter? The down yeah. shot. You got the Food. butter. Look, bananas and butter. Yeah. Bananas in pajamas. Bananas and pajamas and butter, bro. <laughs> Do it like the IRA guys who won't use my cutting boards. You ever cut meat on those boards, my friend? I'm like, yeah, well, I can't use them. I use my hands. <laughs> All right, so look, you got bananas and butter. You want to get them caramelized. You know what that means? That means you bring out the sugar. You know what it sounds like? It sounds like this. I like that sound. That sound of crackling butter fat. <laughs> crackling butter. Crackling butter fat. Butter. All right, so look, now we're going <laughs> to take some rum. Give me that ice cream scoop. I have the. Uh, the fine seven-year-old monk you see it? in the in the sophisticated plastic bottle. Yeah, it was seven years old when the bottle was the 20, bottle 20 years, years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good, right? <laughs> so look, we pour, we take the bananas, shake them around a bit. And we're gonna pour the rum on here. Take it away from the flame. Pour the rum on there. Smoke alarms above our head. Nah. Whoa! <laughs> then while that's happening, is that the flambe? That's the flambe part. Then we add the brown sugar. Don't bring your hand yeah, off, sure. though. A little plastic brown never sugar. Hurts. Yeah, a little plastic burn. That's a lot there. of brown. That's a little, a lot of brown sugar. Well, the whole idea is you're taking brown sugar, rum, and butter, and you're making caramel in the pan, and you're going to melt the brown sugar. This is really sophisticated the way I'm doing it here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Woo! Now, let's fill my scoops up. Oh, yeah. When you see this paper right here, I got this, this uh, ice cream hand hey, packed. We're going to add a little more butter now to, to our caramel. So we're basically building a rum caramel right in a pan. Butter, brown sugar, rum. This is the Stewart's, Stewart's shop hand packed pints. Oh, I had the option packed. of getting a half gallon for cheaper, I, but I'm like, I want hand packed. I want it hand packed, man. Yeah, I don't mess around with, unless it's hand packed. That's right. Stewart's no, shops. On the corner of Zena Road and Route 28. So look. At that, as your brown sugar melts and your butter melts, it doesn't look like a lot of butter anymore, does it? So then I mark it down in New Orleans. Uh, 
All right. Now, what you do, because we like you, is you take a couple of bananas, put them over there, then we take a spoonful of this caramel with all the rum in it. Mm. And that's your that's your thing. Andy, have you ever had the banana squash? I, many times. My yeah, first right. time at your place, I had it. Is well, the same as bananas? Bananas foster and bananas flambe is the same thing? Uh, flambe just means set them on fire. So if you set your banana on fire, you're going to just. Throw so that's it. bananas foster is flambe. The, the, the bananas on fire come from Plato's retreat, right? At Plato's retreat. You know, they did have a buffet at Plato's Retreat. What they serve on? Uh, who's the guy who started Screw Magazine, Larry? Uh, Al Goldstein. Al Goldstein. Al Goldstein. He insisted that the buffet at, at Plato's Retreat was dynamite. Well, it was probably <laughs> most of the servers, right? There's nude, nude people all around the buffet. Yeah, I mean, if that's your thing. There's one more left. i got to make some more bananas here. I'm gonna... Who wants to? Uh... Who wants to come up Who and wants grab to come a little? Up Brandon, I know you do, man. You can leave the camera for a you second. You need a <laughs> spoon or a fork. Oh, yeah, yeah, we need your hands. Yeah. I got okay, spoons okay. for Stewart's. Hey, Andy robbed them all from Stewart's. Yeah. Here you go. Stewart's, but it's usually spoons. Hey, was Peppy there? Peppy's there every night getting ice. Epic, come up and say hi. Here's Epic from, hey, Epic, Epic. from Epic from Murphy's Law, everybody, right here. Yeah. And now he's in Sensuous Tiger with me and Chernoff. Oh, we're Sensuous Tiger is playing April. 27th at the Colony. That's with Daddy Longlegs. They're going to be on the show, and we're going to be doing a TV show here beforehand. Uh, and uh, 420, on 420, I'm going to be DJing at BSP with Ice Balloons. An animal show is going to play. I can't recall off the top of my head who else is playing, but some great other bands. Ultram is playing. Ultram is playing. With uh oh, speaking of which, Mark Ferrer Ferrero's in Ultram. He couldn't make it tonight. He was gonna give me a haircut. But maybe we'll have him on the next one. Who's having uh, Foster's? Two for the crew. Foster's Coach House. That's my favorite restaurant on the other side of the river. You ever eat a Foster's Coach House? Oh yeah, the cake is being placed kind of turned me on. Oh, I know that's. I know you know. To me, that's a sign of. Well, you can hide your salad. We got some dynamite London broil. Don't let him give you any of that flank steak crap. You can try the London broil. London broil. Oh, what's it, what's his a London broil? It's the, that's a, they take a cheap cut. They make it good with mushroom gravy and stuff. Slice real thin. You ever had the London broil, Foster's? Huh? You ever had the London broil there? They're famous for it. It's dynamite. Well, you don't like it? It's great. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, well, uh, it's like a, a reminiscent of visiting my dad in the VA hospital. It's good. What's up? How's your banana? It's outstanding. Let's take it out. We're going to, we're going to, what? What am I forgetting? Oh, Burger Records out in California. We've interlocked. They're getting, uh, they're on board with us, and uh, we're, 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 we're a team now, and they're going to be uh, doing a lot of stuff with my Meltasia Corporation. So the next party is going to be Meltasia and Burger Records presents. So let's hear for Burger Records out in California. <laughs> West Coast and East Coast unite. It's like the Bloods and the Crips together. It's not anything like that. Crisp and quick, they unite. Let's, uh, let's give a round of applause for our special guests, Andy Chernoff and Rick Orlando. Celebrity hairstylist Mark Ferrero, feel better. We'll see you on the. We we'll got him on the next episode. Yeah. All right, <laughs> PA, take us out. Bam, I am. Projections by Bam, I am. Visuals by Bam, I am.
Thank you. Thank you. Can I put more of